For the scalar projection of A onto B, uh, you can imagine B as the floor, uh, like the floor of the room, and and the uh, the arrowhead on A. You've got A and B, and they their, their tails are together. The two two vectors, and then the uh, it's kind of like the arrowhead of A drops down to the floor uh, along a, a line that's perpendicular to B, which I'm saying is the floor. So that's the projection of A onto B. And it's just what you get from that's that's how I would visualize it and then to get the scalar projection, you kind of measure how far you are from the origin, which is where um, the the tails of the two vectors were. And that gives you the scalar projection. So it, it's sort of like if, if B... If the vector B that you're projecting onto is on the ground, and then you've got vector A sticking up, if you've got a little marble right at the head of vector A, and it drops down to the ground perpendicular to B, along a path perpendicular to B as it drops, and lands in a place, and you measure from place where it lands to the tail of B, which is the origin, and that gives you the projection of A onto B. Now, the uh, mathematical, you know, the numeric value of that is, is just the length of A times cosine theta, where theta is the angle between A and B. And notice that the length of B doesn't really come into play here because, uh, I mean, as you can imagine, it, it doesn't really matter how long this vector B is. All, all the vector B is really doing is telling you, you know, how how the marble is going to drop. It has to be perpendicular to B, but how long B is doesn't really matter when you project A onto B and you're just looking for the, you know, the scalar projection of A onto B.